This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with the first video for the measurements and units module. In this video I want to talk a little bit about the metric system and metric units and about dimensional analysis when you need to convert between units. Let's start by just talking about what is measurement. Well, measurement actually is a quantity, it's got a, 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 um, some substance to it, that includes both the number and a unit. So the number by itself is not very helpful. You don't say I am 54, you say I am 54 inches tall. You have to give a unit so that we can interpret what that number means. The English system is what we use every day. Things like inches or miles or pounds or gallons. And this is a difficult one to work with because each category is based on a different unit and a different relationship between the units. So you know that with inches, you've got 12 inches in a foot, but you only have 3 feet in a yard. So going from inches to feet, you're thinking about 12, and going from feet to yards, you're thinking about 3. Or ounces and pounds. Here we've got 16 ounces in 1 pound, so it's not even the 12 or the 3 that we saw in our measurement for length. Or when we're measuring the volume of something, we've got cups, that there's two cups in a pint, and there are two pints in a quart, but there are four quarts in a gallon. So the English system is much more difficult to work with. The metric system is used by scientists based on um, the international agreement from 1960, and it is much easier to work with because each category is based on multiples of 10. And so when you're talking about multiples of 10, you're talking about moving a decimal point one place to the right or to the left, and it's much easier to convert. The common units that we'll be dealing with chemistry this year are involving length, as meters or more often centimeters and millimeters. Mass, we tend to measure in grams or sometimes kilograms. Temperature, we do most of our sort of ordinary measurements with a Celsius thermometer, but then in some of our calculations we'll be converting to Kelvin units. Occasionally we're going to measure time, and that we measure in seconds. And then amount, when we get to measuring out amount of atoms or molecules, we'll be talking about moles. And we'll learn more about that in a couple weeks. Some of the units we're going to be using are actually derived. Volume is a unit that is derived because it's actually a length. Um, if you think about how you know volume, you're measuring the height and the width and the depth of something, and that will tell you what the volume is of this little cube I'm drawing here. But when we, um, so we don't talk about that usually as a, a cubic measurement. We don't talk about volumes. We talk about, we use, have used the word liter instead of a cubic decimeter. So that the, the um, actual liter is being derived from how many cubic deciliters this amount of space is. Because it's based on a derived unit, we have this relationship between milliliters, which is something we're going to be measuring the volume of things, but those are also equivalent to one cubic centimeter or one cc. And you might be familiar with the term cc from um, watching medical dramas on television where doctors are giving, you know, 12 cc's of something to somebody. You actually can... Um, convert between milliliters and cubic centimeters because one milliliter is the same as one cc. The metric system was developed in France in the late 1700s and as I said earlier it was adopted by scientists in 1960 as a standard for the scientific work being done around the world. The metric system is one of the foundational um, systems used for our international system of units. It's not the, the SI units, as it's referred to, because in French, this would be système international. Um, the SI units are not all metric. Time, for example, is not a metric-based unit, but many of the metric units are part of the SI, or one of the, form some of the SI units that are um, used across the world scientifically. The metric system, each of the dimensions that we are measuring, whether it is mass or length, has a base unit, a word like meter or gram or liter, plus a prefix. And the prefix gives you an idea of how much of the base unit is being measured. So if we're talking about millimeters, then it's being measured in thousandths of a meter. Or centimeters, it's being measured in units of hundredths of a meter. Or kilometers, it's being measured in units of thousand meters at a time. The conversion between units, as I said, can be very simple because we're just talking about moving a decimal point. In order to 
talk about converting between units, it's helpful to arrange your prefixes in this stairway. So if we have our basic unit in the middle, 10 of those units are deca whatever. So our basic units that we'll be talking about are meters and grams and liters. And we capitalize the L for liter so it will not get confused with the number one. So if we use meter, 10 meter is a deca meter. You also see this spell D-E-C-A. Um, if you remember that this A here is like it's above your basic unit, like we're going up the stairwell, that kind of helps you keep deca and deci, which is not 10, but one-tenth of a meter. So it takes 10 decimeters to make a meter. It takes 10 meters to make a deca meter. Then we have hecto. 10 decas make one hecto. Um, but we really don't deal with that unit very much, and then 10 of those make a kilo. But really, what we're more likely to think about is the relationship between this basic unit and the kilo prefix. Going the other way, as I said, we have deci, which is one-tenth, or 10 decimeters into one meter. Centi is one one-hundredth, or 100 centimeters in one meter. And milli is a thousandth, or 1,000 millimeters in one meter. So again, on this way, the prefixes that we most frequently deal with are centi and milli. So how do we deal with conversion? How do you think about moving your decimal points? Well, if you think about this staircase, you notice if I'm going from my basic unit, such as a meter, and I want to move down to centimeters, if I have, oh, let's say, four meters, and we want to know how many centimeters that is, and you notice that the... Um, Abbreviations here are, are, except for the leader, are all small letters. So we've got a decimeter and a centimeter and a millimeter. So those are the prefix. Then also with deca, you use DA, hecta, H, kilo, K. So that we've got four meters. How many centimeters is that? Well, we're moving to the right. And so this tells us that as we're moving to the right on this little staircase, our decimal point also moves to the right. And it moves two places, so we're going to add two zeros at the end of that four. So four meters is equivalent to 400 centimeters. We're moving on the right on our staircase. We're moving two steps down, so we move our decimal place two places to the right. How about if we're going the other way? So we're starting off and we say we have 37 grams. How many kilograms is 37 grams? So kilogram, kg for kilogram. 37, we're going to be moving up one, two, three steps to get to kilo. We're going to be moving to the left. So our decimal point has to move to the left. So it's starting over here by the 7. So it'll move one space to go in between the 2. Two spaces puts it in front of the 3. And three spaces will put it in front of a 0. So 0 0.37 kilograms is equivalent to 37 grams. So if you can keep this sort of staircase in your head and think about moving your decimal point in the same direction as you are moving on that staircase, it'll help you in converting between the basic the different prefix units for your base any any one basic unit. This of course doesn't work if you're trying to convert from meters to liters or in this case would be cubic meters to liters. There are some other prefixes that are part of the metric system that have become very well known with our um, computer system. We've talked about megabytes and gigabytes and now we've gotten up to terabytes. So the difference between one meter and a kilometer, a kilometer is 10 to the third power of a meter because it's a thousand meters in one kilometer. So each of these are three more. So we've got 10 to the sixth here or a million, 10 to the ninth here or a billion, and 10 to the twelfth here or one, mil one trillion. Going the other way, we've got micro that is one millionth, um, one over one million units. Nano is one billionth. Pico is one trillionth, and so um, we sometimes talk about, we'll talk about nanometers when we're talking about the, um, the size of a wave of, of, from the, of electromagnetic energy, a light wave is measured in nanometers. Nano also has kind of been in the popular press talking about some medical advances, some things that are happening in the very, very tiny world. And so you may see these prefixes, they're all part of the metric system.
All right, so let's talk about converting, getting into some of the math stuff that everybody just loves about chemistry. Again, as we just already talked about, when you're converting between units with the same basic unit, then all you have to do is move the decimal point. And since I just did this for you, you should be very quickly be able to think, okay, if I'm going from grams to kilograms, I'm moving up the staircase, one, two, three. So that means we've got 4.379 kilograms in 4,379 grams. Or if I'm going from liters to milliliters, then I'm going down the staircase one, two, three places. So instead of 3.6 liters, we're going to have 3600, 3,600 milliliters. And so just thinking about the staircase really helps when you're converting in the same basic unit. When you need to convert between units that are, have different basic units, that's either the English system and the metric system, or you're talking meters um, versus cubic meters, which I'll get to in a minute, you're going to use a system called dimensional analysis. It may also have been called unit conversion or factor label method in your algebra book. And it is based on creating ratios of two equalities so that it you're basically plugging in the, a uh, number one in the middle of your formula and allowing your units to be canceled out. So if we take our example from the English system that 12 inches equal one foot, therefore if you put 12 inches and divide it by one foot, you're putting basically the same thing over the same thing. Anything over itself is equal to one. If we use that in a direct example, how would we convert 4 inches into centimeters? You need to know the ratio of equalities. What is equal? 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. So we can put 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch or 1 inch over 2.54 centimeters. Either ratio will work because you're just putting the same equality over the same equality. To set this up, you want to think about what desired unit you're heading for, what starting unit you're working with, and the ratio in the middle needs to have your desired unit in the numerator and the starting unit in the denominator. So we're starting with 4 inches. We're going to multiply that by our ratio that has our starting unit inches in the bottom and our desired unit centimeters in the numerator. And then we plug in the numbers. So 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as 1 inch. That's going to give us an answer in centimeters because we can cancel out these units just like they were x's in algebra. Um, and so we get rid of that unit, we leave it in centimeters, and then we just have to multiply 4 times 2.54, and it'll tell us it's going to be 10.16 centimeters is the same as 4 inches. So that's how you're working with dimensional analysis, thinking about what ratio you can create, that you've got two things that are equalities, they represent the same thing with different units, and putting them over each other just is going to give you a 1, essentially, that you can cancel out some units. When you're converting between cubic units in the metric system, you also need to use dimensional analysis. You can't just move a decimal point when you have something in cubic centimeters and you want to talk about what is it in cubic meters. Um, the program I use for this doesn't allow me to use superscripts, which is why I wrote out cubic instead of put a 3 in there. So anyway, here we've got to set up our dimensional analysis so we know that we're starting with 19.32 grams over cubic centimeters, and here I'll use that superscript. It's going to be multiplied by something, and in fact it's going to be multiplied by two somethings to get us to an endpoint that is written as kilograms per cubic meters because we're changing both the numerator from grams to kilograms and the denominators from cubic centimeters to cubic meters. So one of our ratio has to take care of the grams and kilograms and one has to take care of the meters and centimeters. So in this case to go from grams to kilograms we want to put kilograms as our desired unit. We're starting with grams and so we know that one kilogram is the same thing as a thousand grams. And so you just fill in the numbers that are, represent those equalities once you decide where the units go. And then we've got to go to meters from centimeters. And the easiest way to do this is think about meters and centimeters by themselves and then cube the whole thing. And then you'll have cubic meters and cubic centimeters. So what's the relationship between centimeters and meters? Well, there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. 
So this is going to allow me to cancel out my grams units, giving me kilograms, and to cancel out my cubic centimeters here. But remember that 100 has to be cubed when you go to do the math. So it actually is going to be 1 million, because you're going to have six zeros there when you're doing the math. But if we go ahead and multiply 19.32 times 1 times 1 million, and then divide it all by 1,000, so you just do the math with the numbers, you'll come out of the answer of 19,320 kilograms per cubic meter. Hopefully these types of unit conversion problems are familiar to you from your algebra studies. If not, they will be by the time you're done with chemistry. This ends the first video for this module.